no matter what happens in your life, you do not have to suffer emotionally or psychologically. If you understand this, then you can understand the key to your peace of mind. What Nguyen writes in his book teaches us that our minds are our greatest tools. You live in a world of thought and not reality, but your thoughts create the reality you live in. You live through your own perceptions of the world, and each person's perception is different. And if you can understand your own, you can avoid suffering. Nguyen talks about our understanding of reality and how our thinking affects it. He says, Reality is that the event happened with no meaning, thinking, or interpretation of it. Reality is neutral and without meaning until you impose on it your own meaning and interpretation. External events do not affect how you feel. Instead, your own understanding and interpretation of them affect your emotions. In the book, Don't Believe Everything You Think, Nguyen writes that external events do not cause us to feel the way we do. Whenever an event happens, we have the choice of how we react. To explain this, Nguyen gives the following example. If you really hate your job, the thought of the job gives you anxiety, stress and frustration. Even when you're just sitting there on the sofa with your family watching a TV show together, the thought of your job leaves you fuming and furious. The event that is happening on the outside does not affect how you're feeling. Instead, what you're thinking about affects how you perceive reality. Because even though you're not physically at work, the way you think about it is clouding your reality. Two people can be experiencing the same event, and yet each one will feel differently about it. The root of your suffering then is your own thinking. Here's a story to illustrate this point. A long time ago, a young monk lived in the monastery by a lake in the forest. The monks were obligated to meditate daily and report their progress to their mentors. The young monk found it difficult to stay focused, which left him infuriated. When he complained to his mentor, the mentor asked him, Do you know what is really making you angry? The young monk said that it was too distracting and too noisy for him to focus. He wanted the other monks, birds, the wind and the animals even, to be more considerate and quieter when he was meditating. He complained that there was no peace in the monastery. He said that each interruption made him angrier. The young monk tried to find a quiet place to meditate. One day he got on a boat and rode to the middle of the lake where he was finally able to meditate without any disturbances. He did this for days and was quite happy with himself. One day, while he was meditating in the middle of the lake, he felt a splashing of water and felt that the boat was rocking. He became furious and opened his eyes to see a boat speeding straight towards him. He yelled for it to steer away to avoid a collision but the boat kept coming at him until it hit him. The young monk became angrier and yelled even louder at the owner of the boat. But there was no response and then he realized that there was no one on the boat. It had just drifted from the shore. It was then that he remembered the mentor's question, do you know what is really making you angry? The young man realized that it's not other people, situations or circumstances. It's not the empty boat but my reaction to it that causes my anger. All the people or situations that make me upset and angry are just like the empty boat. They don't have the power to make me angry without my own reaction. The young monk returned to the monastery and learned to meditate alongside the other monks. Now, most of us are quick to think and even overthink about events that occur. But more often than not, we are unaware of our reactions to these events. We live our lives as a series of reaction to events not knowing that we are thinking our way out of happiness. Your mind will keep you alive, but it will not help you thrive. Your brain is wired to help you survive, and so it will try to warn you of potential dangers, even when they're highly unlikely to happen. The brain will scan the present environment, use memories from your past to conjure up scenarios, and forecast potential future events and the numerous threats on the basis of your memories. Because your mind is designed to stay alert, if you keep using it without insight, you will be stuck in fight or flight mode, full of anxiety and doubts. You don't have to believe everything your mind shows you. You no longer live in a dangerous environment that requires hypervigilance. Allow your mind to rest and you will know peace. Nguyen writes that there is a difference between thoughts and thinking. Thoughts are auto-generated and take no effort, force or control to come to existence. Thinking is actively engaging with the thoughts. Thinking requires a significant amount of energy, effort and willpower. Thoughts are things we have, but thinking is something we do. 
and it is important not to engage with every thought that arises because thinking requires willpower, which is a limited resource. Nguyen teaches that thoughts that feel good are not a result of thinking, they're generated by a natural state of peace, love, and joy. They are a byproduct of a state of being, not a state of thinking. Your thoughts are neither good or bad. Your engagement with these thoughts, however, takes you on an emotional roller coaster. Thinking about your thoughts gives rise to judgment and criticism, resulting in emotional turmoil. For example, if I asked you, what is your deepest desire? A specific thought would pop into your mind. If I continue to ask how you can achieve it, then you actively engage with the thought and are likely to fall on an emotional roller coaster of how achieving that desire would make you feel. Now keep in mind, the initial thought was neutral. It may have even made you feel excited. It was only when you engaged with the thought that you became anxious, doubtful even. Any emotion you felt about this question was because you engaged with the thought that arose. You don't have to think about your thoughts or judge them. Thinking creates negative emotions. It talks you out of your thoughts and creates reasons as to why you shouldn't have them. In the end, it results in psychological and emotional suffering. Thoughts create, thinking destroys. Thoughts come from the universe, while thinking is a result of the ego. Thoughts are the raw materials with which we create our universe. But when we think about these thoughts, we destroy a peaceful state of being. Thinking is painful and negative because it is filtered through our limiting beliefs and judgments. Thoughts feel exciting and expansive, but thinking will leave you feeling heavy, restricted and limited. To know whether you are having thoughts or are thinking, monitor your feelings. Your feelings are a window to what you are thinking. When you are thinking, you will likely have negative feelings. Thoughts create a sense of wholeness, while thinking creates a sense of separation. Thoughts are also effortless, while thinking is laborious. If you can monitor your feelings, you can learn to let go of the train of thought that makes you feel confined and exhausted. You might be asking, if I engage in positive thinking, can I create happiness? But Nguyen teaches us that we can only ever feel negative emotions when we are thinking. When an event happens on the outside, it will inevitably trigger a thought or thoughts within you. However, if you decide to engage with these thoughts, you start thinking about the event. This is your reaction. You can choose not to engage with these thoughts, especially those that bring suffering. While some negative emotions are natural and helpful, most of our negative feelings are self-imposed and, to be honest, completely unnecessary. Negative emotions are a part of life. Embrace them. The goal here is not to eliminate negative emotions completely. The goal is to avoid unnecessary ones. The intensity of negative emotions that you feel is in direct proportion to the amount of thinking that you do. When you lose your job, it is only natural, even healthy, to feel the initial negative emotions that come with it. However, when you begin to spend hours thinking about your loss and what you could have done differently and what you should or shouldn't have done, now you have begun suffering. The goal is to avoid this form of emotional and psychological pain. Now here's something that's counterintuitive. Positive feelings arise not from thinking positive thoughts, but from not thinking. If you recall the moment when you felt the most joy and love, you will realize that you did not have any thoughts on your mind. Your mind was probably completely blank. You don't have to think in order to be happy. The times we feel our best, our happiest, the most amount of love are the times we don't have any thoughts on our minds. It's when something completely blows our minds into silence. Even when you have thoughts like, I'm so happy right now, you usually experience them after the feeling. Positive feelings come before positive thoughts. Nguyen tells us that it's not what we're thinking that is causing our suffering, but the fact that we're thinking. So the answer to the question that if you engage in positive thinking, can you create happiness? Is no. Thinking positively does not create happiness or positive feelings. Instead, not thinking is what creates happiness and positive feelings. When you start thinking, you filter your thoughts through your perception. Your perception is marred by insecurities, fears, doubts, confusion, worry, and other negative experiences. Once you engage with a thought, you interfere with its neutral nature. When you think negatively about a thought, you suffer for it. And even when you think you're thinking positively about a thought, you still suffer for it. This is why you should not believe everything you think. Here's an example. If you have a thought about your job, 
It's just a thought. But if you think about how bad your boss is and how he makes your job difficult, you're now thinking negatively about the neutral thought regarding your job. You then spiral into the negativity of how you hate Mondays and how that coworker is bossy and so on. You put yourself in emotional turmoil and psychological suffering. Here's another example. If you have a thought about your job, it's just a thought, but in an effort to feel good, you force yourself to think positively about it. So you try to remember how you first felt in the first few days, how excited you were to get that job, and all the dreams and plans you had, and how good it feels to get the money deposited in your account. These are all positive thoughts, but then you realize that you're not that happy right now, how hard it is to get motivated to work, how you're no longer the same person, and now you have introduced suffering when trying to be positive about it. Happy thoughts or positive thoughts do not lead to happiness or positive feelings. They only lead to exhaustion and suffering. Now the conclusion is, should you just stop thinking? Now of course not, you cannot completely stop thinking. All that you can do, realistically speaking, is reduce the amount of time you spend thinking. Make it smaller and smaller with each passing day. Spend more time meditating and being present to the moment. Eventually, you will get to a point where you spend most of your day just engaging with the tasks at hand and not being caught up in your own thinking. That is the secret of monks. That is the secret to living in a blissful state most of the time. Now, if you like this video, I'm sure you'll enjoy this book summary of the video on the screen right now. That's all for now and thanks for watching.